Hi everyone, welcome back to Earl Grey Books. I'm Ellie and I'm here today to do the wrap up of my first um, round of the read uh, my Kindle project that I've been doing. You may have seen that I already posted my selections for the second round of this and if you saw that you might be thinking to yourself, wow, Ellie must have read them all. What a good job she did. Amazing. So cool. Look at her smashing goals. No, um, I didn't. I didn't. This is, this was a fail. This was a, a complete and utter fail. But I got bored of these ones and I didn't want to read them anymore. So we moved on. Let's, I'm going to tell you about them though. I did read one. I read one. I finished Falls in Love, which is edited by Ashley Herring Blake and someone else. Let me check. Do I want to check? Anyway, I'll post the the thing because I can't be bothered to scroll all the way back to the start of the book and then have to scroll all the way to the end. Um, but yes, this was a net galley and I read it. Uh, this is a anthology of YA romances. I didn't like most of them, but I feel like that's kind of standard for me when it comes to short story collections or anthologies where there'll be like one or two that I'm like, yeah, this was good. And then the rest of the stories I'm like, I did not enjoy that at all. So um, yeah, there are definitely a few authors in there that I'm interested in trying from that. I think there are a couple of authors that I tried before, maybe one or two that I didn't actually like their stories. Um, but yes, this is done. What I did really like is at the start of each of the stories, each of the authors have been given like a, a trope, a typical YA romancey trope of some description like fake dating, um, I think there was an enemies to lovers and a few things like that and so at the start of each story it would tell you the trope that it was going to be in it and I really liked that because it meant that I could skip some of them that I just knew I wasn't interested in. I'm personally not much of like a secret royalty kind of reader. I will occasionally read things with royalty in but very rarely and that was one of the prompts one of the tropes so I knew to skip that one because it, it just wouldn't interest me. So I liked that and I think on a whole I give this maybe maybe I give this like a two actually like it was okay but the vast majority of them I didn't like. So that's the one that I read. Hi it me editing Ellie just jumping in here to say that I actually forgot a book um and that's one that I read so making a point to talk about it uh, but I did read Wiki Games by Cal Carpenter. Um, I read this one on KU which is why I forgot it uh, because I returned it and then stupidly was like oh I got eight books in this folder that I've called reading my Kindle on my Kindle it, it must just be these eight and yeah anyway. Um, so this is the second book in the Queen of the Damned series. This is a like reverse harem, paranormal, supernatural, um, romancy type book. Um, these are pretty short and honestly there isn't really that much romance in it. Like, I don't know. I kind of expected like in the first book it was quite slow and I was like okay but like this is like a reverse harem so like when does the like smart start you know and um there was a little bit in this but not a lot and these are just fun like I've read recently another Cal Carpenter and yeah that's how I would describe her books as just like a fun good time that one also wasn't super smutty so I wonder if she's just not that smutty or just like really slow burn romances. Anyway, I guess I'll find out. And um, I am devastated because the rest of this series isn't on Kindle Unlimited and I want to read them but I don't want to pay like 
six dollars for an ebook of them so we'll see but back to the video but hey look i did better than i thought i read two <laughs> i know what you're thinking like wow the dedication but what can i say <laughs> but back to the video now and then i also dnf'd um the companion by E.E. E. Ottoman. I was so excited about this because this is a historical romance and it features a trans character and its own voices and I was like oh my god that sounds amazing I'm so excited for it and then it's also about writers and uh, I didn't like it. I think I read 20% of it maybe not even that and I just wasn't for me. Um, it is like a novella but it from this was months and months ago now but from memory it moved like super quick in terms of the romance I feel like I have like a hair stuck to me um and I am much more of a slow burn fan I don't like when romances go from like zero to a hundred um and like yeah I understand that that can happen in real life but I just prefer in books that it's a bit more of a build-up. I like the build-up. I like having the banter and the whole, you know, will they, won't they, even though you know that they will because it's a romance book and that's kind of the whole point. Um, but I like that build-up and this one moved a little too quickly for me. And then we're going to talk about the other ones because I did make progress on them which maybe isn't really a good thing but I'm gonna start with Mercurial by Naomi Hughes give me a second Fletchy wants to come say hi come on. um so I can't remember what I was on before we'll all just wait oh okay did you just show everyone your butt did you have to um so I can't yeah I can't remember what I was on before but I'm now on 26% I feel like I was like on 22% or something so I didn't really I didn't really read too much um next we had Appetites and Vices by Felicia Grossman um so gonna make those books fall on you again can't remember what I was at but I'm now at 61% I should just buckle down and finish this because I've been reading it like for a year and a half or something like that at this point but the thing is every time I go back to it I can't really remember what's happened or who people are meant to be and then by the time I get back into it I want to like I'm like done with reading it for that time and then I have to do that all over again every single time is that worthy of a dnf quite possibly but i enjoy it when i read it apart from the fact that i have to remember things and i don't have a good memory uh next one was another historical romance which was the lady's guide to celestial mechanics by olivia Waite. i read 11 percent of this one and um i wasn't loving it i read that 11 percent um all in one go and I just wasn't enjoying it that much which I kind of hate because I I think I talk this one up in my head so much because like a historical romance that's sapphic please give it to me but yeah I don't know we're gonna continue reading it at some point but next up I had The Lives of the Artists by uh, Giorgio Vasari which was really just a book for me to read as part of my art history degree. I read 12% of it. This is not an easy book to get through and I knew that but it also is talked about in basically every single class that I do. Um, so I, I will continue reading this even though I'm not sure how much of it is really valid other than the fact that it was written and it was kind of the birth of art history so I will 
finish it on principle <laughs> because maybe there is some stuff in there that I do need to know. Right now a lot of the artists are like, who is this guy? Never heard of him. But um, yes, I'm still very early into it and I think they're chronological. So um, next one was Eyes Turn Skyward by Rebecca Yaros. <sighs> I'm 13% into this one and I don't like it. I loved, this is the second book in the series and it's my third Rebecca Yaros. I loved the first two that I've read so one was just a standalone and then the first one in this series is Full Measures and I loved that. I cried on page one and I didn't stop crying for the entire book and I loved every second of it. This one, her writing feels so different from the first one and now I'm kind of like did I not really pay attention to that in the first one because I was so sad um, or is this actually just not as strongly written? So I'm struggling with it, um, but I own all the books in the series and I, I do really like Rebecca Yaros, so I want to keep going with it, but it is a push. Finally, the only one I didn't pick up was Beloved by Toni Morrison. I had a audiobook of a short story of hers that was either recently discovered or recently republished. Um, I don't even remember the name, but I'll put the cover here. I listened to, I think it was like an hour long, and I listened to like the first five minutes. It opened with just a bunch of ableism, basically, and I was like, you know what? I don't sit through ableist language for anyone, not even Toni Morrison. So, goodbye. And then I just, after that, wasn't really feeling like picking up Beloved because I was like, what if it's also filled with ableism? I just not, just not into that. So I am going to come back to it, but it might be a while down the line yet. Like I said, I have already posted my selections for the next round and I'm hoping that I do better with that one. Um, but I am going to this time around give myself a time limit, time limit, because I do want to fit um, two more rounds of this after this round that I'm already doing. So I'll have four for the whole year. Um, and I talked about that in my reading goals recently. So I hope you all enjoyed this and that you're doing super well. I will link that selection down below my original TBR uh, for this round and any other videos that I have mentioned. I will also continue to link my video uh, in which I show you my entire Kindle selection and I get your thoughts on it because I would love to know what you're interested in me picking up. All that sort of thing, it really helps me pick out the selection for each round. So with that being said, I hope you're all doing super well and I'll see you all next time.